Hey everybody, welcome back to Dreamloop Devcast. Uh, we just got some crazy news from uh, uh, the Netherlands and Belgium about uh, loot crates. And Ville, what's going on? <laughs> that's, that's how it's gonna be. Um, Ville is live at Belgium. So yeah, I'm live, live, <laughs> live at Belgium. I know I'm not actually, that's, that's a lie. That's fake that's news. That's a blatant lie. Yeah, that's fake news. No, but yeah, um, yeah, so I'm not sure about necessarily crazy news, but there are crazy aspects to them. So basically, this is the whole thing. I think even we have discussed this before about uh, legislation surrounding loot boxes and all that stuff. And at first, I think uh, earlier it was Holland who were like, they are gonna, um, they are gonna uh, do do legislation surrounding them, make them uh, start fining companies if they if they don't do certain things, stuff like that, and then. More on that later because I think the Belgium one is maybe a easier one to start with because they also their gambling commission um, had like a proposal that apparently contains fines up to one point six million euros. Uh, there were different amounts being floated around, but that was the the amount that most media I think commented on. And then there was also a mention of jail time up to five years, and that I think is a good example of why there is a little bit of a problem because. Jail time for who exactly? <laughs> How the is this company. going to work? Yeah, like, they're, they're like yeah, the whole company them. or the game. Yeah. Like they're gonna take a box of the game and like, put that <laughs> in a jail cell. Like you know, you're not getting out on you until you regret being awful. You know, yeah, like it's 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 good that these things are being discussed, but there are issues, and I mean there are always going to be issues when new legislation is introduced because. I mean, that's how it works. I mean, it's an iterative, iterative process, but still there are scary possibilities. Because the problem with um, the, 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 the Netherlands one was that, from what I understand, they were specifically targeting um, like loot crates, uh, in-game purchases where uh, players could sell them to each other, uh, possibly on third-party services. And they, they were like, trying to pressure, for example. I think the big one they were probably targeting then was Valve and CSGO, for example, but I mean, that has massive problems. For example, if I am an asshole that wants to hurt a company, and there's a lot of people like that out there, what's stopping me, if that becomes the law, to facilitate my own service where I let, let people sell, buy and sell things, and then that forces the company to legally start stopping me and react and like, they might get fines because I did a thing. Like, it's a crazy proposition. Like, I, I get where they're going, and their heart is maybe in the right place, but there are problems. Another problem is that if you define it like that, then what's the deal, for example, with, say, Pokemon cards or whatever? Like, that's the same thing, you know, you can you can get them in a random box and then you can sell them to other people. But there, there are, of course, differences. That's like a very, very high-level thing. But yeah, mm -hmm. shit's, shit's happening, at least. <laughs> and then a long silence. Long silence. <laughs> I need to yeah. take a drink, and I thought that somebody would, somebody would continue from there. <laughs> no. It's just, just going to be me ranting about European, yeah. well, my my very limited understanding of legislation in various European countries. Yeah, well, what the the article I just read, or the a small part I read, because it was like Google translated from a Dutch newspaper or whatever, so it wasn't very, it wasn't a good read. So my knowledge is limited in this this uh this topic but uh in general i think yeah it's it's good that it's been discussed and i think some regulation is needed uh, mm. but uh, i'm hoping that we could as an industry do that regulation ourselves but i'm <clears throat> not sure if we can since yeah there's there just are... the industry is not really at all organized like it barely yeah. works with movies and such and only because those are much older industries that evolved during a different time. But mm -hmm. with video games especially, I don't think it would ever work if yeah. the industry were to self-regulate. Like, I mean, look at rating systems, for example. Those are completely and utterly pointless in all, all ways, pretty much. And they are basically the industry policing itself for the most part. Well, it's the big boys policing themselves. And then for mm -hmm. us, it just means we have to pay people to do stupid stuff or whatever <laughs> to get a sticker. <laughs> Um, no, yeah. that's pretty what? much it. <laughs> like, if what, I what, what do you mean they're like, pointless? Huh? What do you mean the ratings are pointless? Uh, well, because it's, um, 
but most of all, people don't care about them. Like, it's been seen time and time again, like, kids are playing GTA. Like, you know, the average age, for example, of a GTA 5 player is probably below the age rating, stuff like that. So mm -hmm. they're pointless in that regard. Then the categories and such are completely outdated. For example, I mean, now they're thinking of updating them with, um, you know, sticker for contains microtransaction. I think they did that somewhere, but it was so vague that most people aren't going to understand what the hell the sticker means. Mm -hmm. for example, or, or the, you know, the symbol. I think that, yeah. that was in America. There was some discussion about that like a month ago or whatever. But, and then it's like, because the whole point of it is that it's, um, from what I understand, it's like industry self-regulation where if that works, then states don't have to make actual laws. So it's just kind of mm -hmm. like, a, you know, the state washing their hands and the industry washing their hands. And hopefully there is not some massive out outrage. Mm -hmm. And then if there's a massive outrage, they can't really do much about it other than just bitch. And then probably there's going to be legislation. Yeah, yeah I they, understand that, you know, but obviously it's supposed to be a marker for the parents not mm -hmm. to buy their kids to GTA. And it's this, not like it doesn't yeah, but then, make then the, the rating system pointless. If the system is completely like vague and like the parents, like, for example, with the new the gambling sticker, like um, from what I remember, or the gambling mark, like it was worded in a way where average person would have no idea what the hell it means. Yeah, like, that's a problem yeah, if there's uh, stuff stupid like stuff like and that. And then, for example, like, what does cartoon violence mean? Or what does violence mean? Or, like, like it's, it's sometimes very, very vague. Like, you can't really just trust a sticker on a box to tell mm -hmm. you if you're, it's suitable for your kid or not. You have to check the thing out, actually. Um, and then the age things too, like, because it's super arbitrary. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, we could go into a whole discussion about, like, you, sh you know, flash an apple and it's, you know, you have to be an adult to watch that. Mm -hmm. But you can, mm -hmm. like, have blood and, like, you can yeah. beat people up and they can be bruised and bloodied and stuff like that. And that's completely fine, like, you yeah. know, for a much younger audience. Yes, yeah, it's, it's very, very weird, especially the ES ESRB ratings. They are yeah. super strict of any sexual content. It's, like, instant instant top rating or the max rating and then when you kill people then it's 16 or so yeah, yeah. And, and then there's uh, like yeah i was gonna say that uh in esrb um even if you sell like an, a mature or adult only game to a kid uh no one can enforce the law on the on the shop until the parents of the kid sues the company yeah 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 it's, <laughs> oh. it's Which, like and it's, it's just not going to happen in the American system because an individual cannot sue a company, like, uh, practically, unless they are, like, mm. a millionaire or a billionaire. It's just mm. going to cost so, such a ridiculous amount of money and time mm. to do. So, yeah, it's, in, that's, that's what I mean, that it's, like, yeah. it's so toothless that it's essentially pointless. Yeah, okay, I understand. In Finland, I think the state can actually, or the... Um, the authority that's monitoring these things can actually sue the shops mm -hmm. if they can if they are caught selling to a minor. But yeah, has so that like well. ever happened? I'm not I, sure. I, I don't know of any <clears throat> cases. There has there have been many studies at least that some shops do this, and yeah. those are uh, like uh, those show up every now and then in magazines and, and newspapers. But I'm not sure if if any shop has ever been fined for that. Yeah. And then the thing is too that now you, a lot of these purchases are made online. Yeah. You know, like how the hell does it even work then? Like, do you sue? Yeah. You know, some a kid buys a use kid using the parents' credit card buys a game from uh, you know from the PlayStation Store. Do you sue Sony? <laughs> like, how, how does that work? Yeah. Well, I think the point in that is that then the parents shouldn't be <laughs> giving the kid. Yeah, the, but that uh, that is the, that is the real problem here. Like I think that yeah yeah it's it's and it's not like not to do the whole like parents are at fault thing. It's more that society in general like we just don't have the we don't have the necessary tools to necess possibly even discuss these things. Like that's what we should be focusing on. Like why are loot boxes a problem, for example, and what can we do about it? It's not just that all those poor people who cannot help themselves and em em end up becoming bankrupt because of like like do those people even exist? Do we know for a fact? Or is just that's just a compl complete like manufactured thing, you know? How many people there exist who actually have become homeless and like you know, financially completely fucked because of video games? I, I can't think mm. of on any actual example, but the implication seems to be that they exist, and I'm not saying mm, they don't. Yeah, maybe not be video games yet, at least. But yeah. um, 
um, just gambling itself. Like yeah, yeah, gambling. of course. Yeah, that's and true. Of course, say, if, if they draw a parallel between a, like money gambling, like poker and whatever, and video games, then it's of course. Mm. And since yeah. the loot box thing employs the same addictive mechanics mm. that many gambling machines yeah, but do. That's, that's the um, other thing too though that you don't go into like a facility that's specifically specifically designed to siphon money from you which is a casino you know you don't go there it's all virtual so it's it's right. very difficult to yeah they are, they are still worse. usually they are still usually very much designed to siphon money from you yeah yeah of course it's, of course it's but it's still a complete yeah but you know, but that becomes to a point where, because on other things we discussed that a virtual thing is obviously different from the real thing. Well, we, for example, I mean, obviously, for example, murder in a virtual reality is not a real murder stuff. Like there, there is a distinction. But then, of course, on a psychological level, like I guess mm-hmm. psychological sure. pressure would be the same. But then, you know, you can start. I'm being a very much devil's avocado here, but you could start then saying that hey, if people can be, you know, influenced to do do uh you know get get addicted and you know use money stuff like that uh in video games similar to real casinos can you then also argue that people being exposed to violence in a video game would be the same as people being exposed to violence in real life which has been shown to make people more violent so then you get the old old potato of you know video games causing violence on the table again and (laughs) but hasn't that been shown that it doesn't what being exposed to real well, well, violence? Well, Trump is yeah, very, no, I think is very being violent. exposed to video game violence doesn't. Yeah, 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 it, that's been shown. But I mean, like, yeah. you know, that that's what I mean is that there's obvious difference between exposure to things in a virtual environment and exposure to things in a real environment. So yeah. the legislation needs you cannot just completely take you know casinos and how they work and then just apply that template template to video gaming. Yeah, of I course. Uh, the, there's the uh, common ground here that you actually use real money you use the same same thing to you mm, to do the true. gambling to achieve the same uh, like the 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 feeling of uh, of gambling though of so. course that's the big thing is that usually they don't actually don't do that mm. because it's you know first of all it's always going to be hard currency and then second of all like for example in these uh, loot box scenarios that are now being legisl- legislated for like you know, it's not even stuff that's necessarily worth money. Like in the Netherlands example, it's stuff that becomes worth money because people start selling it to each other independent of the company making the game. It mm. becomes quite muddied at that point, the water. Yeah, yeah, so it's a bit different then. But they have systems in place that allow it to be uh, changed for money, I guess. I guess well, that's no, the one, no, they don't. Guess... They, they have a system in place where you can trade. Mm-hmm. But there's nothing stopping people from I'll give you nothing and you'll give me a thing and then in a completely separate platform you'll give me money. Like, because allowing trading allows for that to happen. But the thing is if we remove trading, which is what might happen if this Netherlands thing keeps being pushed, um, then it's actually worse for people. Because then you are forced to just pull the slot machine thing until you get what you want. At least in, in Valve games you can trade for whatever you want with other people using just in-game mm-hmm. stuff. You don't need to use money and you're not supposed to. Like The primary use was to just trade with other people and uh, are possibly, mm-hmm. I guess, create communities and such. But then, of course, you know, if people can use money, they, they will mm-hmm. pretty much. Mm-hmm. So I, I wonder if this is just somehow like, since they haven't found a reason or like a <clears throat> section in the law that would out, outright uh, like make the loot box themselves illegal, they found this sort of uh, a roundabout way of going going at this. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly, I think, what happened in the Netherlands case. I, when I read that, I, I, I think that's what, what, what was mentioned, is that that's, that's what they can tackle, that specific scenario. But it's problematic because rather than going for what they can, which might have damaging consequences, they should then rethink, okay, what do we really want to do here? You know? mm-hmm. <clears throat> but it's, it's definitely, a, definitely a problematic, problematic thing. Did this did this whole fiasco rise from any particular games? That I mean, it was I mean, um, it was the Star Wars, yeah, Star Wars Star Wars Battlefront two started the whole thing. Yeah, it, it had been building up for a while up to that mm-hmm. point, but that gave everybody like um, 
you know, really big target sign, so to speak. Even though it's not brought up anymore because it did horribly and, and stuff like that. But that was that made the kettle boil over, so to speak. And I think a big reason of... I, I think we've even discussed this before in the show too, but like the big reason is because it's Star Wars. And mm -hmm. Star Wars, of course, is, as I always say, it's the fami family IP, or that's what they want it to be. Like, it's for the whole family, you know. Like, everybody can go there together and stuff like that. And then you have, like, a whole family thing, and suddenly there's gambling in it. And, I mean, video games tend to be viewed, especially in consoles, they tend to be viewed like, you know, kid kind of like, or teen, whatever, you know, thing anyway. And then it's mm -hmm. on an IP that's for the whole family, like, it's supposed mm -hmm. to be, like, a safe space, whatever. And then it has gambling, you know. And everybody knows Star Wars. You know, you can go mm. to just an old, 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 whatever politician go like, did you know that this whole family Star Wars thing is teaching kids <laughs> to gamble? And then mm. they're going, oh my God, you know, and then just you know, stop the presses. <laughs> right. yeah. I'm going to look super good if I'll tackle that. Like I better be, you know, tackling it before everybody else because then I'll get mm -hmm. more votes and, you know. Yeah. Actually, one thing relates to the whole family thing now that the Fortnite has blown up completely. Oh yeah. Kids, kids uh, do they have some sort of loot box thing as well yep yeah they do and there's there's, there's already there. been a lot of like crazy there's clips on youtube if you want to search for like moms being interviewed in talk shows how mm -hmm. you know fortnite is making their kids go nuts and stuff like that mm -hmm. yeah. um, it's you know it's it's brewing up um but you know it's... they won't they won't find the loot boxes because they are disguised as llamas yeah that's true too <laughs> also it's it's a little bit um llamas. It's a little bit different because it doesn't in Fortnite, like for example, your character changes every round, if I understand correctly. Or have uh, I understood wrong? Like the appearance of your character. I have no idea. Yeah. I, I, I honestly don't know the game well enough. Like whenever I watch streams, there's sometimes they're female, sometimes they're male. Like you can mm. change the custom cosmetic stuff like that, but it's not quite as obvious as in, for example, Overwatch, where obviously there's going to be motivation. Like, I like this specific character, I like this specific character, so I'm going to buy this. It's a little bit more superfluous, but I mean, it's still pretty much almost as bad. And then there's this crazy stuff, like, for example, there's the whole um, Fortnite dance competition thing. Mm -hmm. That's I'm not sure if it's still going on, but they had a thing where, like, post people for people to post a video on social media of them dancing, and then they would be put the best one in the game as an emote. And then there was like billions of kids basically just making <laughs> the most ridiculously embarrassing uh, videos. <laughs> and putting them online on a public platform. Because they were encouraged by... I'm actually sort of surprised that there wasn't like a big deal about it. But I guess it's because people are completely blind to such things being bad for you. Like we are, we are, we are kind of having the Facebook. How to build a community? <laughs> yeah, we are, we are kind of having the Facebook. You know, oh, Facebook is evil thing, but people don't actually understand. They just think that Facebook as a company specifically, they just happen to be <laughs> evil. They don't understand that the bad thing is putting your fucking data out there. <laughs> that's the, that's the bad thing. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, for example, they had stuff like that. They have, you know, there's possibilities for bad stuff to happen there. Definitely, and you know. Stuff is stuff like this is relatively slow, you know. There's they're mm. now on Overwatch and CS:GO, and those those came out years ago, so it's gonna take some time before before media gets on it, and then they're gonna go for it hard if it's still relevant at that point. Yeah, I'm just happy that it's been regulated. For one thing, that <clears throat> it's it it probably isn't good for for the kids. And mm. second of all, I've, I've, I just hate loot boxes in general. <laughs> like, it's, yeah. it's annoying but, because I think there's um, potential for mechanics that work the same way to be quite fun. Like, for example, um, take a random example. Like, I've been again playing a bit, bit of Terraria. And Terraria's fishing basically works like, you know, you throw the rod in the water, you maybe get a thing, maybe don't. Sometimes it's a crate that you can open and it has random stuff in it. And basically the way it works is it just means you don't have to, for example, mine for stuff because you get the ores from the box, stuff like that. It's kind of like a different system for progression. But it's essentially a loot box, like in, mm -hmm. in all ways. It, I don't think it hurts the game in any way. I feel it actually adds to the game um, because it's such a brainless activity, for example, that often it's like, well, I don't feel like mining where, you know, me and my friends were kind of done, but we're still hanging around on the server. I will fish a little bit. I will get... Like stuff like that, it adds to the game. So there are ways to use it, I feel, harmlessly. Mm -hmm. So if the legislation is overly, you know, heavy-handed, then that, that things like that disappear. But then again, I'm feeling to, I'm completely fine with, 
you know, Terraria no longer having phishing, if it means that we don't have to deal with this microtransaction garbage anymore. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I guess you're not spending uh, euros for lures for your yeah, phishing. Yeah, that's, rod, that's, so. that's the other thing. That, that is true. Yeah, or the so. keys. Keys for yeah, the grace. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that is true, like, they don't have to necessitate use of money. But the problem is, though, that people are going to figure out clever ways uh, around that. Like, hey, for example, take an MMO with similar phishing system, and they cannot sell key of the boxes anymore. What they do is, like, they make all the areas where you fish have these super aggressive monsters that gank you, and then you can buy uh, <laughs> items that keep them away, for example. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Oh, I solved it immediate. Like, that took me all of fucking 20 seconds. Yeah. Uh... You know, yeah, every, every second thing that you get from the rod is, is a, like a super powerful monster. Yeah, exactly. And then you can buy a type of a lure that doesn't catch those monsters, for example. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I don't personally really, uh, I don't dabble in, in any games where loot boxes give you like actual advantages. The only, only games uh, where they, I mean, the only kinds of loot boxes that I really encounter in games that I play are they just give cosmetic things mm. and even then i still kind of hate it because I, there's a big stigma on loot boxes now and you know when i click the loot box and it starts shaking does that loot boxy thing yeah <laughs> it bursts open you know that's there's something like it's highly personal and it's highly opinionated but it's i just kind of uh, it's it's funnier. I mean, it's more fun when I don't even realize that it's that I have been given a loot box. It just please, please don't make them look like loot boxes for me. Yeah, yeah. That's the other thing is that they use all the possible. Like you know, it's the same shit that is uh, in gambling machines too. Like if you look at the uh, for our international viewers in Finland, gambling is like state owned, state owned basically. Uh, mm -hmm. There's this company called Ray, basically. It's it's an abbreviation, but whatever. They they control and make all the gambling machines. So we have them in grocery stores, stuff like that. And they keep adding new games to them. All the money goes to that company, who then uses it basically mm -hmm. for for you know helping people with gambling addictions and and culture things and stuff like that. And like it's it's a relatively nice system. But for example, even if you look at those games visually, for example, how things are animated, how the sounds that play, stuff like that. It's that same like aesthetic language that loot boxes yeah. are used to. It, that would be basically impossible to legislate, but I would love to have legislation that just says, don't do that. <laughs> like, yeah. or, or if you don't, do that, don't, don't do that. Appealing. In, yeah, like don't do it in the context of using money. That would be, that yeah. would be nice. It's a really interesting thing because it deals with such like grassroots level type of addiction mechanics in the you know, like human human psychology yeah, it's all about that it's all about like manipulating people to use money and there's very specific things you want them to do in a very specific order like there's for example always the thing that you always need to get the first purchase so every single game has like some super ridiculously high value offer as the mm -hmm. first thing as a, 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 like relatively cheap you know one one off like a premium type of a thing or you know get started get 10 boxes for ridiculously low that you can buy once whatever you know something to get you over that first hump of first purchase because if you buy once you're infinitely well not infinitely but a lot more likely to buy the second time stuff like that mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I wonder like, if that has something to do with the sunk cost fallacy. Like, I yeah, already put does. this much money in there so I, I can put more because I will get more excited. Yeah, definitely. And I, I can't does. stop since I've already put this much money. Yeah. So I, I just but there's other well things too, more. such as you don't, you know, you, you, you bypass the critique because you've already done it once. You mm -hmm. know, so it, yeah. it feels stupid. Well, in a fel sense, it's sunk cost, you know. It, you, would, you would have to admit that you made a mistake once. Yeah. you know before that it's easier to just go like well i you know I, I figured it's fine once so it's probably fine again and you know mm -hmm. there's it wasn't so bad last yeah, time yeah exactly, exactly exactly and i mean and it can be good like let's let's not go that far as to say that microtransactions can always be evil like as, you know mm. games have i mean we are making games we, we <laughs> can we cannot just castrate our own industry um if if the, the thing is that these things make make much more money than premium uh mm -hmm. now Personally, I don't think you, you need to make all the money. It is enough mm. to make enough money to pay yourself a livable wage, basically. But still, and, for and example, yeah. I was just going to throw in here quickly that and now this, is, this goes into the other, other uh, topic, in, I guess, in this uh, that one must be, con conver like, must be gone through to really get to the bottom of this whole thing is that 
uh, is the is company's uh, like goal to make all the money or is it like some money fun, yeah. or like enough? That would be, but I think that would be like its own entire conversation that is like uh, <laughs> no, not just gaming specific. Mm. But I, I believe, uh, but this uh, to like this divide is the reason why we have these loot boxes now. Uh, partially, just, like, partially at least, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it's a slippery slope though. Because the thing is that, for example, like in, I can imagine in our in Dreamloop scenario, for example, if we were to do, you know make a game that's free to play, that would have such mechanics, and if we would realize this makes so much more money than Stardust Galaxy Warriors, then what mm. we would think is, well, if we then do this, it gives us more buffer to make you know more cool stuff later on and not worry about money, and that would be mm. I think completely fine in a way. But then mm. you are doing the same thing that we are sort of crit critiquing here, you know, because I think mm -hmm. for example. Uh, and then that's the thing, for example, so you want to have like this premium package for your game, you know, that's the word, word, first purchase. Mm -hmm. no, there's the, the only possible reason for that is not, you know, to be greedy. You can just do it because you're like, hey, you know, we want to offer this option, you know. We want to, you cannot give everything, you know, super cheap, but maybe we can give this one important thing super cheap and then we have other options, you know. And mm -hmm. there is um, a good point to the whole microtransaction idea in a way, like this patron model, so to speak, where mm. people who want to give you money can give you money. Mm -hmm. I think everybody's fine with that. And then the next step is, well, let's give them something in return. And I think mm -hmm. that is still mostly fine, or it should be. But then the mm -hmm. problem becomes, let's design things that we can give them that can entice new people to give us money. And then mm -hmm. you start getting to the bad territory. Yeah. Uh, it's problematic. Um, <clears throat> let's let's uh, put the real ending to the game behind a paywall. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm. That's a good thing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> everyone I, likes that. Uh, paywalls, I think, are pretty common, for example, in the Asian markets, uh, and mm. people seem to be fine with it. That's the other yeah, thing yeah. too. That globally, different regions have different attitudes towards these things, yeah, uh, China, and they China might not be, especially. Yeah, and they might not be wrong in being fine with it. Who knows? Like morality isn't necessary like we our system is superior and everybody else is wrong or whatever who knows yeah um but that yeah was i think I, I think we, we should say that all of these are our own, own opinions and yeah like, i mean that's that's the whole, what empirical whole data is. yeah <laughs> yeah that's something uh, that's i guess is worth iterating is that for example what we uh, personally at least what i say about news article stuff like that that might be complete bullshit like, I don't really do that much fact-checking. Checking. This is more of an entertainment thing about our silly <laughs> opinions than it's supposed to be like a news show. So, I mean, for example, I do try to have all these articles open and ready to say this, guys, but hey, don't take my word for it. <laughs> like, check, yeah, be, check my shit. I might be, 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 be woke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Actually, one thing that kind of scratches the same surface is that... Uh, you know, I personally, I, I want to be there making really good games, really games that are really fluid to play and they are amazing uh, in design so that uh, their game systems are, uh, are a little addictive maybe. But there has to be some kind of, uh, there has to be some ethics involved so yeah. that you don't, you don't, I mean, not even talking about microtransactions, but you know, Talking about because games really, really uh, can be a problem to some people. Yeah, yeah. that's what that they play, for play too much. And you know, yeah, you have to some, somehow, at least sometimes, you gotta think about that that as well. Even if you're making a like just a premium game. I mean, that was one thing we, for example, talked about a lot when we were first designing Star Wars: Wars. The whole idea was that it like it doesn't force you to start it, and it doesn't try to keep you playing it. You know, yeah. That was one of the core ideas was that you control the amount of it you want to consume. And like the act of playing it in itself in any given moment should be enjoyable. And then you can decide when you've had enough enjoyment. So that's why we don't have like, we do have like light RPG mechanics, customers and stuff like that. But the core idea is that it doesn't have like daily rewards. It doesn't have like any massive overreaching grind. It doesn't have like unlocks that you have to do specific stuff to get. Especially like, now for example, we wanted every mech and every weapon to be available for everybody at all times. So that you don't get that like addictive loop of, well, I've, I'm so close to unlocking this guy, so I'll play a little bit more. Of course, you can still get that, but we try to not abuse that intentionally. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure that if we hadn't done it this way, it would have made more money. 
Like it's just, <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't yeah. matter. Because yeah. one thing I want to mention earlier about loot crates too, we discussed like some aspects of them, but one important reason also why they're done is because they obscure the price of things. Because we were actually yeah. like, I'm, I guess I'm not allowed to necessarily talk about specifically things, what, what we do, but we have a ton of projects and ton of like, we pitch for different things, stuff like that. So for example, today we were talking about like uh, monetization in one of the things we have going on. And uh, it really got me thinking that the reason why, you know, loot crates, why gotcha, stuff like that is used is specifically because otherwise, I think Tommy, you said like about the idea that um, here, you know, the amount of money people can put in is fi finite, you know, mm -hmm. and then you have everything. And that's exactly why you have gotcha is to obscure that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like so that the amount of money, you know, there can be more money put in. And for example, that's a bad thing. That's specifically a bad thing and I think that's something that and I mean that's already being legislated against in a lot of places like I mean mm -hmm. China we just mentioned China before they started having legislation where people have to see the odds for getting things mm -hmm. uh, on loot crates I think that's still not nearly enough because mm -hmm. say that the odds for getting something is 0.5% yeah, it, it doesn't. still doesn't guarantee that you're nope. gonna get it in a certain amount of rolls or whatever yeah so it's specifically just so that you end up using more money than you would be okay with if it was just a price tag. Because you see mm -hmm. people online bitching like, oh my God, that's a 10 euro skin or whatever. Yeah. And then you <laughs> think about like some Overwatch holiday event or whatever, like not to single out uh, Blizzard or anything, but for example, and then you really wanna, want some skin and then you're gonna, you know, some specific thing and you're gonna end up putting like 50 euros in or whatever. And there are people who um, specifically prepare for events. Like, yeah, I'm gonna put like, I'm gonna put, buy, you know, 50 euros worth of stuff or 100 euros mm -hmm. worth of stuff. And because it's a different frame of mind, you don't view it as a product in the same way as you would if it was yeah. just a thing with a price tag. Hmm. Yeah, it's uh, like uh, that, like you said, like the obstruction, uh, obstructing the actual cost of something is some, something that I, I that really pushes me uh, like away from a product. Uh. Like, for example, if, I, I, well, I, I remember the time when <laughs> things could be acquired like straight away and yeah. didn't have to roll for it. And I, I, it was it was fun. I mean, if, if a skin cost five euros and I want that skin, I, I would like to pay five euros for this but game but even that is they never said five euros they mm -hmm. said you know whatever game bucks you know mm -hmm. and it was like six thousand game bucks and then yeah. you can either buy five thousand for five euros uh -oh. or ten thousand for yeah. nine euros exactly. and, yeah i'm so looking at you bioware yeah <laughs> so there was but i mean everybody did that there was all, all that bullshit was like there from almost the very beginning yeah and then it just got more bullshit is instead. Like I remember League of Legends, for example, when all the skins were just like this and this many riot points or riot box, mm -hmm. whatever the fuck they were called. And there were no loot crate stuff like that. And I had to admit that I don't think I ever bought a skin. I think I bought yeah. uh, some champion bundle, which was, you know, designed to be the first purchase thing you make. I think I bought mm -hmm. like one or two of those because I want to get heroes and then use my all my in-game bucks to get like mm -hmm. runes and stuff that you couldn't buy with hard currency anyway but i never bought skins yeah. because it was like these have no value to me and because the pricing and such was so opaque uh, mm -hmm. in a way but it was also super obvious that they were pricing a way where you will always have a little bit left over in your wallet and stuff i just had mm -hmm. no desire to buy mm -hmm. purchase so i think that you know, maybe if I was from the beginning conditioned to a loot crate based system where I like, fuck it, you know, I'll buy, it's one, one crate, I, I'll get five crates for five, one euro or something like that. Uh, and I could get that thing. I would put, maybe put that euro in. Uh, whereas before I wouldn't have put anything in. And then you imagine that happening on a larger scale and you can see why this system makes more money than the old way. <clears throat> Yeah, actually, truth be told, I, I don't think I've ever bought any actual, like, skins, like, just, like, one-off skins. Because I think game. that's the thing, too. Everybody talks about it, but I don't think that many people actually fucking ended up buying them. It's <laughs> like, just that I usually just buy premium games. <laughs> but it's yeah. also the thing, though, like, I, I don't think people actually that much want the skin. Like, it's also, also like, manufactured um, desire in a way. Mm -hmm. If you look at the marketing right. campaigns for, for example, events, like, I think that's one predatory, really predatory thing, too. I think that's something where you, you could point a finger 
towards uh, Blizzard a little bit, for example. Like, hey, we are going to have, you know, the summer games or whatever. We're going to have the winter-themed event or, or whatever. And it's a timed, timed exclusive. And then I think they have a system where if you, like, get enough shit that you don't want, you get, like, scrap from it, and then you can use that to buy the specific thing you wanted. So it mm -hmm. is technically finite. But still, it creates in you the desire to get these things. And I think that's the actually maybe more hideous part than having gambling mechanics themselves. It's manufacturing in you this need to have these virtual skins or whatever. Yeah, it's like the the basis of selling something. Yeah, I mean, yeah it's marketing. It kind of sucks. But I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's sales 101. Yeah, it's, it's, and I mean, it's I mean you know. The game. Yeah. And you know, like, I, I fucking hate marketing, <laughs> like, for the most part, uh, or, or a lot of aspects of it anyway. I understand it's a necessary evil, but to me, it, it sometimes feels extremely unethical. But I honestly, I think m the fact that marketing exists might be a worse problem than the fact that loot boxes exist. But yeah, maybe that, that's a very extreme opinion, of course. Uh. I'm waiting for the time when we don't actually need anyone to sell anything to one another, when we can actually, you know, look into it ourselves and make a, like a decision ourselves and actually read about things before we buy them. But know? of course the problem is that nobody has time yeah. for that in everything. Yeah. And I think the big problem is that video games are, you do them for fun. And most people don't consider looking up information and comparing price and stuff like that to be fun. Maybe some people do, and then what those people will do is maybe they'll start a service where that can or be done. Or they're responsible. And... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think but... the only game, only only game where I've uh, ever used money on like skins or, or anything is Street Fighter Five. Mm -hmm. I I bought actually quite a few costumes in that game, but that's the only one. Yeah. Like I bought DLCs for other uh, other yeah. games, but that doesn't count. That's not the same conversation. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's about like this, uh, you know, I, I think I personally think that when they release a skin or a costume or something like that, uh, very small, and then they create the desire to buy it. It's for some reason, it feels worse than when they create when they release a DLC and create the desire for you yeah, to buy because, that. Yeah, yeah because the, <laughs> the thing with the DLCs is that it's actual content. It mm -hmm. does something. It offers you gameplay. Having a skin uh, doesn't really like. It's not gameplay. That uh, to me, mm. that's ultimately the thing. Is whether I get some actual tangible gameplay as a reward for buying something or not. Yeah. Because skin is yeah. just. It's just a visual thing. Uh, it can be fine, actually, uh, in the context that the reason you decide to buy a skin, for example, is because. Uh, and this is the model I would like to advocate is you are like, I want to give these devs money. I mean, I, 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 did, I mentioned this before. I want to give these devs money and then they can keep doing, keep doing cool stuff. And the devs are like, well, you're cool. So we'll give you, you know, a thing. And actually, because mm -hmm. you are so cool, we're going to give you a list of things to pick from. So you can get a thing that you really want. And, you know, and, and mm -hmm. it's also a business, yeah. but like that, that part of it is fine. So it can be a combination of, I want to give these guys money because they're cool. And yeah. I also want that thing. And that's, that's yeah. fine. Th that's, a, that's a very noble way to look at it. And mm -hmm. I think, I, I mean, I wish everybody thought like that, <laughs> but then there's also like, I, I'm sure like, well, at least myself, when I, when I, uh, uh, when I buy some Street Fighter costume, it's mostly about you know wanting that character to look really cool because mm -hmm. some of them are really cool in my opinion mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. uh, of course i do still hope that capcom keeps doing well yeah. and keeps going on yeah but i mean that just means that i think you still consider both points but for you the coolness is a major point and i think mm -hmm. that's fine too because mm -hmm. in a way like i even though it gets to a problematic territory i think coolness Purchasing coolness for your character can be a tangible thing in, in, in mm, that regard. Yeah. Like, it doesn't have to be intangible, but I think it is more definitely more intangible than I want to buy a DLC to get more content or whatever. Now, I mean, yeah, for sure. we have already gone down a massive slippery slope because if we think, uh, personally, I think maybe the other way things should be is as back in the day, you buy a game and then you have the game and you don't need fucking DLC or anything, but that's just proven not to be for some reason, commercially as viable. So we don't do that that's, that much anymore. I mean, we did with the CW pretty much. We have a DLC coming out now, but hopefully it's going to be 
people are not gonna hate us for that. <laughs> I don't think what? DLC is that that much of a like. A, I think it's normalized. It's, yeah, yeah, it's it, it has, it has. In, but in I just gaming, mean, it yeah. used to be a you know swear word mm -hmm. uh, back when horse armor was a thing, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and now we're here. Like we already mm, lost one battle, and yeah. we're just. Well, I, and it, I, I guess it comes down to the um, sort of uh, aspect of what you get for the price you've been asked. Mm -hmm. And horse armor was like, what, five to ten euros? Yeah, and it was just for the armor. The f and you can get better with mods. Yeah. Uh, so, I'm, and again, no one is forcing you to buy that, but the sort of, uh, I dare say, audacity or sort of like, uh, what, did, what did they think when they put this out? And then you get like to the slippery slope of, there's a lot of slipperiness, there are a lot of slopes here, um, mm -hmm. but you get to the specific uh, slope uh, of um, what if they cut out content from the game to yeah. put into the DLC. You know, that's that's yeah. a big, big discussion topic that people sure. have. Yeah, I remember there was a lot of talk when the Shadow of War came out about that, yeah. for example. Yeah, and that's, that's actually even more interesting because it's kind of like they cut out content and put it into loot boxes. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. like even because they were not even DLC, it was just like legendary orcs and stuff are only available in boxes that you have to buy, from what I understand. Mm -hmm. um, I have a mm -hmm. mixed understanding of that actually because I think some a lot of people were thinking you don't have to use money in it, uh, mm -hmm. like you get so much free crates and stuff. And then other people were saying no, you have to. And there's a massive end game grind. And some people were saying no, there's not. And why don't you enjoy the core gameplay? Blah blah blah. Like it, yeah. the discussion was a, the waters were a bit muddied. But mm -hmm. but in general, from what I understand, yeah. they had like cool adversaries for you that were available in random, you know, randomly available in boxes that you could buy with real money in a single player yeah. game. And I think that's sort of uh, another thing is that it doesn't make even any sense in the <laughs> like in game. No, no. It's Why are these guys in a box? <laughs> and how do how do they even fit there? <laughs> I mean, these guys are huge. Yeah. It's. I mean, it, it doesn't occur as many make make any sense really whatsoever. I, I don't think they even tried to frame it because they could have framed it in a way, for example, where you're like I don't know the box contains some sort of trophy that attracts a specific or I don't know like if they want to make it more in world. But of course, it's not supposed to be in world. It's supposed mm -hmm. to be in wallet. That's the, yeah. That's where it's or out of wallet. Well, yeah, yeah, it depends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, do I remember correctly about uh, Deus Ex Mankind Divided that uh, uh, some DLC stuff that you can buy, I mean items, are only uh, redeemable for one uh, save game? Or yep, so all of yeah. them. Yeah, everything that, that you buy it, from the in-game shop are, are like Praxis kits yeah. or like something like uh, was there even like health items are one use only. When you use them, they're gone. Yeah, I mean, if if after all this talk, if if somebody should go to jail, like, <laughs> those guys, like that's that's bullshit. Uh, I mean, Great game, but I, again, again, I, I guess it's fine if you're up fr up front about it. Yeah. But they weren't. Yeah, uh, yeah you got the point. like pre-order bonuses or whatever that, that uh, contain like praxis kits and these new stuff when you start a save with those things uh, that's it they're if you start another save they are not there anymore and they're of gone. course of course i think that's again the thing that because you can approach pre-orders from two two directions you could argue mm -hmm. that i want to give these guys more money because this is such a cool thing and i want to support them but in that case it's more going to be i want all these things that mm -hmm. you know, then you are then basically lied about. So augment your pre-order. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Augment your pre-order, which was a mess. So, yeah, yeah, I actually got the some kind of a uh, day one edition or whatever, and uh, I got some items in that uh, in-game storage thing, and I mm -hmm. just noticed them just a while ago. Like I hadn't noticed that before, and when I picked up a pistol from there, it said something like, you know. They kind of obscured it a little, but you know, basically what they were saying is that uh, you won't be able to uh, choose another save and and use them there. Mm -hmm. So, so okay, I get now that I only took out like one elite edition pistol, and but I guess I really need to start using it because when the game ends, <laughs> I guess I won't be seeing that pistol anymore. Yeah, it's it's, it's a ridiculous thing like virtual exclusivity. 
like mm-hmm. it's it's so and, so and it's weird. it's not even just a cosmetic thing it's, it has actually like improved stats yeah yeah, yeah of course of mm-hmm. course and that's the other thing they they saw, say often now they keep trying in games is like they keep having this like skip the tedious bits philosophy mm-hmm. which i think for example the praxis kits are about like hey, i'm not strong enough i don't feel like grinding i'm just gonna buy these things and be strong and beat everybody up mm-hmm. which again it's... like in a way that there is a segment of the audience i think for whom this is fine mm-hmm. but mm. the problem is that it taints your product for another segment of the people just by existing and yeah. Uh, this is something where you can easily be like, just, you know, you don't have to buy them, blah, blah, just man up. You don't have to think about it, but, but mm. it's still there. It's mm. still there. Yeah. And it devalues mm. my experience. Like, <clears throat> call me pity, but just the fact that somebody can, because I value the fact that sometimes beating a game is an achievement, you know, in itself. It's, mm-hmm. it's hard. And then some asshole can just ride past me on a raft made of dollar bells or whatever, you know. <laughs> That's fucking bullshit. Like, even if it's a single-player game, like, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to play a game where the game can just go, go like, ah, oh, you know. Like, like it, it makes the game feel unsure about what it is. Like, what is the correct way? Is the correct way to use money? What did you make this for? You know, why yeah. is that there? Like, is this the right way? To, or why did you, do you let people play your game the wrong way? I mean, I understand that the answer is money, but like from a game design point of view, it's just well, bizarre. Talk going deeper into this, uh, it's uh, painfully uh, like uh, clear that the whole in-game shop was added after the game has fin- had finished development already. Yeah. If you actually buy those Praxis kits, uh, you sort of to throw the balance of the game to the gar- garbage bin. I, yeah. I mean, the whole the game in itself is very, very well balanced. And you actually gain maybe even too easily like experience and practice kits anyway. So if you go ahead and buy those things, you're just <laughs> Yeah, uh, but that's, that is exactly the thing. And I, I yeah. think now I have to maybe backpedal a little bit because I was myself earlier mentioning that different parts of the world have different philosophies maybe this is completely fine for example in china maybe they don't mm-hmm. care that it breaks the game entirely they get mm-hmm. enjoyment out of the fact that because uh, from what i understand there are cultures where the act of using money uh, in uh, to something in itself is seen as a valuable thing um mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. Uh, coming out of my mouth sounds retarded uh no offense <laughs> to anybody um but uh, i mean i can kind of see why that is because we have retarded customs elsewhere too like we have for example in a way uh, you know we have this like macho culture like uh, you know if, if you ride a harley david and you're a badass or whatever it's, it's, it's a fucking product or if you have a specific clock or you drink a specific thing or whatever you know and i think it's it's sort of the same thing if you display mm. if you use money then somehow it makes you more manly or, or whatever like i think it's, mm. just, it's just the same thing some cultures are just more direct about it you don't have to buy a yeah. thing you just have to use money so maybe for them, it's like they don't even care that the game becomes... They're just like, look at how easy this is because I worked hard and made all this money to make it easy for myself. So this is in a way a reward. The frame is completely different. Like, like I have validated myself through my use of currency as a person yeah. now. And this game is my bitch now, you know, and I, I enjoy <laughs> that. Uh, maybe, maybe that's the yeah. idea. But... I like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, I was going to say that I like when the game allows you to play it uh, like the way you want. And um, uh, this might be a moot point, but previously, previously we used to have these things called cheats that mm-hmm. would allow us to get more practice kits or, you know, get yeah. that special weapon or, you know. And if you wanted to power trip your way through a game, you just put in the god mode or get maximum stats or whatever. And but of course, the argument, argument I was making, though, is that uh, you didn't use money to do that. So it has no value. The fact that you couldn't do that without money is where the value comes from, uh, from this point of view. I'm just like mm-hmm. avocadoing a point of view that I'm not necessarily yeah. sure that it exists, but I can imagine it existing. Um, yeah. Uh- this and, is more of a uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. more of a point from my point of view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah, I, I, that, it's, it's... that's something that's being discussed around a lot is that we don't do cheats anymore. Instead, we if you want to cheat, you have to like edit files mm. yourself or whatever. These yeah. days, you, they don't really do cheat codes. Which personally, I don't that much like cheat codes. 
myself um, because I am very impulsive and I have, I have you, bad impulses. You obviously control. were never scared of the monsters in old Doom so that you used the god oh, mode. Oh, because... I've only, you know, I, I don't <laughs> think I've beaten uh, original Dooms without cheats. We only played them with <laughs> yeah. cheats because they were... But that's the thing though, I think I missed on a lot of cool shit because I only played on cheats. And if we couldn't mm. find the exit, we would even do no clip and just go there. Like we missed the <laughs> yeah. entire game because cheats existed. Yeah. So in a way, would, was, would it be better if I only had this faint memory of Doom as this really scary game that we couldn't beat and then, and then maybe I would go back as an adult and beat it? Or is it better mm. to have experience like shitty watered down version because I was a kid with no impulse control? You know? That's well, a really good if question. you enjoyed yourself, then I guess it was fine. Yeah, well, I don't think I did. It was more just like, I guess we, you know, that, that, I mean, you know, kid things don't necessarily make sense. But <laughs> like, I, I regret, I, I, there are many games where I regret using cheats. And it tends to ruin the game for me. Like, even, even in Bethesda games, they have the console, which they have to because you get stuck all the fucking time. God forbid, <laughs> uh, I, I don't know how people play those games on consoles. Um, I guess Poorly. they just accept the fact that I guess I lost two hours of progress because my character is stuck in some weird rock formation uh, and you cannot no clip out. But even there, like I feel bad when I have to activate the console because I've learned to associate cheats with uh, like loss of a pride ac accomplishment later on down the line, so to speak. I think you games, uh, in a way, should make you work for you know the pride and accomplishment. You know, like like. I think it's fine to purchase certain things, but you know you shouldn't be able to purchase your way around the game entirely. I mm -hmm. think you should still have to play something, which should preferably challenge you in some way. Mm -hmm. But I think like uh, not not talking about the purchasing of basically cheats like in the Praxis kits in in uh, Mankind Divided, but like using cheats to play through a game for example i think that's that sort of you acknowledge that this is not the optimal way of playing it but you yeah, choose yeah, like, to do it yeah, anyway. like i'm not saying that you know th that was a complete tangent like yeah yeah yeah. i'm not saying that having cheats and having purchasable practice che uh, kits are equally bad i'm saying that cheats can ha also have bad side effects by existing so i would mm. prefer maybe a world where if you have cheats you know maybe I'll let people unlock them by beating the game, for example, mm -hmm. that would have solved it. Uh, or only have ones that make the game harder or crazier or whatever initially, and then mm -hmm. the god mods and shit give people to people later on the line. If you absolutely have to have them because your game is buggy, then I understand, yeah, put them in, <laughs> whatever. But, you know, like... Or maybe fix the game. Yeah, or maybe <laughs> fix the game. But for, sometimes that might not be an option, you know. Yeah. Like, I mean, the whole yeah. Bethesda example of getting stuck in a rock formation, it's got, like, because of how their physics engine works. And I, you know, I think we discussed this before too, and it just has to be that way uh, for the specific mm. thing they are doing, I think. And then they cannot, physically cannot QA test every single nook and cranny, you know. So it, it just can happen because of the game work, how the game works. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sometimes it's just not feasible. So it's kind of like uh, nice to have a thing that on PC you can then fix yourself if you get fucked. Mm -hmm. Guys, we are starting to run out of time, but yeah. before before we stop, uh, I just need to mention that there aren't any loot boxes or cheat codes in Dark Souls. So. Oh, there it is. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Because we didn't mention um, that yet. We did mention Bethesda, but yeah, that is true. Yeah, so so Would two you... out of two. <laughs> Check. <laughs> two, two Wouldn't you call code. mimics loot boxes? Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, that's a pretty good point. They're like hideous and they're like deceiving things, mm -hmm. and they kill that's... you. That, yeah, take, they, that, all, that you. take your souls. Yeah, they yeah. take your yeah, yeah. yeah which is exactly basically like money. Boxes, so, yeah. yeah, which is basically money in that game. Mm. So, yeah, th yeah, that's a really good logic for mimics. But could you always so win I, when something uh, if you open a mimic? Hmm. Oh, well, I think you lose more often. Yeah. <laughs> if you, yeah, if you, again, you always you lose it. something, so it's inverse. You know, loot boxes yeah. like you always, yeah. so you're I always gonna get something. You know, so it's not gambling we, because yeah, every box contains stuff. We need to add like the loot box uh, sticker to the Dark Souls box now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it contains yeah, I mean, who knows? Who knows what From Software comes up with yeah. next? Maybe the next Souls game, which they will probably make in some form or another. Maybe they'll have some amazing loot box. Shit Dark loot them. boxes. <laughs> Dark yeah. loot box. That's amazing. Well, uh, everybody, thanks for listening, and uh, let's hear you next time. 
Yep. See you, people. So long. Bye-bye.